So this is to investigate the variation of current with potential difference uh, for first a metallic conductor. We're going to use our calorimeter. Um, we're also going to use a filament bulb. We're going to use a semiconductor diode. And then lastly, we're going to use a copper sulfate solution with copper electrodes. Okay. So lads, the setup is the exact same as the Ohm's law experiment. Okay. So you got your power supply, rheostat, uh, your ammeter and voltmeter, and then we're going to insert in here the, the different uh, elements that we're measuring. Okay. So we'll start off with our metallic conductor. We're going to turn it on and adjust the rheostat until we have a voltage or potential difference of one. And we're going to read off the current. The current here is 0 0.15. We're going to adjust then to get a voltage of 2. Our current is 0 0.3. Adjust then for a potential difference of 3. Current is 0 0.45. Potential difference of 4. Any guesses for what it is? 0 0.6. Potential difference of 5. And the current is, no surprises, 0 0.75. Okay, so we can see that for the metallic conductor, uh, it's a linear relationship, which we already know from Ohm's law. So we're going to now change up this, and instead we're going to put in a filament bulb. Okay, so for the filament bulb, we're going to use the digital multimeter just to get a more accurate reading of the current. So I'm going to set the potential difference to one volt on my voltmeter. You can see the bulb is barely on and my current is 0.005 amps. Let's increase the potential difference now to two volts. So at two volts, I have 0 0.007 amps and we'll go up to 3 volts, 0 0.009 amps, 4 volts, 0 0.10, 0 0.010 sorry, and then for 5 amps, we have 0 0.012. Okay, so you can see that the current in the filament bulb is way, way less than it is in the metallic conductor. Alright, so we'll do the semiconductor diode next. Okay, so in this one, uh, we have the semiconductor diode, and <clears throat> I've had to change up power supply to this one which gives uh, much lower voltages um, and then I'm using the digital multimeters for both the current and the potential difference. Okay so we'll get our first reading now so our first reading is 0 0.28 volts and the current is 1.6 and that's microamps. We'll go up to our next value then uh, 0 0.38 volts and we're up to 34.9 microamps. 0 0.44 volts and 120.6 microamps. We're up to 0 0.48 volts. Now we'll need to change the setting on this multimeter to bring it up. And we have 1096 microamps. We'll change these to, to amps afterwards. And then one last reading, we have 0 0.55 volts and the current is gone up to 5.6 amps. And look, we'll just get one more just to see what happens. So with a current of 0 0.6 uh, volts, or with a potential difference of 0 0.6 volts, the current has gone up to 9.42 amps. Okay, and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test with a copper sulfate solution with copper electrodes. So I'm just going to use pieces of copper wire as the electrodes. And these can hang into the water. Okay, so we'll flick it on there. 
and aim for one volt and I can't get down to one volt so we'll start at two so two volts I have 0 0.002 amps 3 volts okay so this is 3.2 volts is 0 0.003 can't quite get 4 so I'm going to take 3.8 volts and 0 0.004 5 volts 0 0.006 6 volts 0 0.0 Zero, zero, 007. Okay, then we'll just have a look at the results then for each of these. So I have the tables here for the, the metallic conductor, the filament bulb, the semiconductor and the copper sulfate solution. And here's the corresponding graphs. So for the metallic conductor, it basically uh, just obeys Ohm's law. So uh, potential difference and current are directly proportional. For the filament bulb, as you increase potential difference, the current increases quickly initially but then slows down as the bulb as the temperature of the bulb increases uh, the opposite happens for a semiconductor so as you increase potential difference on the semiconductor uh, current increases slowly but then as the semiconductor heats up current starts to increase very quickly and then for the copper sulfate solution um, we used the active electrodes so we used copper electrodes so that obeys ohm's law basically a straight line through the origin um, directly proportional to each other if we were to use inert electrodes say carbon electrodes then these would not take part in the in the reaction and it takes a bit of voltage to overcome this um, and you'll only start to get current when you increase the voltage above a certain point